All right. So I've loaded the OBJ here in uh, ZBrush. I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this quite a bit. Just enough so that I can uh, start sculpting some detail into this. So our base mesh looks pretty good. I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to work with layers. Uh, I like to do that as it's a very non-destructive workflow. So I'll create a first layer called uh, just some edge damage. And I'm going to grab myself the mallet fast brush and just start to go ahead and use that brush to chip chip away some uh, detail here. Also make sure to turn on symmetry in the Z axis so we can get both sides done at the same time. So just come in here and just chip away some of the edges here just to create some edge damage. So basically we're going to be layering stuff here in terms of uh, our systematic approach to sculpting this. So, you know, you could start off with whatever part you want. In this case, what I'm starting off with is doing some damage and wear and tear on the edges of what would essentially be this concrete wall. So we go along all of the edges and just use this brush very subtle. Uh, I'm using Z sub with an intensity of about 13. This uh, gives me a very nice subtle look to the damage. I don't want to go too far or else I'll just deform the object in, uh, in a very bad way. So just come in here with your brush and chip away some of this stuff, create some damage, make it look uh, convincing. Okay. Sometimes going over this and doing a couple of passes with the brush uh, can just add a little more detail and make the object look a little bit more complete. So just come in here and anything you feel that needs more wear and tear, just add a little bit more. And if you don't want to damage it that much, just, uh, just don't uh, sculpt that area too much. So this is looking pretty good. I'll create a new layer over here. I'm going to call this one General uh, Deform. And basically we can use the Move Brush to move some areas around because it was looking more like some kind of a Lego piece or something like that. And I want this to look like it's pretty old. I want this broken down wall to look like it's been worn and it's aged pretty good. So using the Move Brush I can move some of the areas around and uh, just make it look more natural. Then I'll add another layer called General Noise. And in this one I'm going to use something called the Planks Brush. And the Planks Brush is great for doing something like this. So you can see I'm adding some noise to this. And you can go to the layer and change the, uh, the value that it has. So at 0.75 it'll have less effect on the object. So it's almost like taking the opacity of a layer and dropping it down if you want to think of it that way. So we'll create a new layer called interior mass. In this layer, uh, I'm going to use the deco brush, the deco 7 brush. There's several deco brushes. Um, they're all pretty similar, but uh, they all have their own unique way of working. In this case, I'm using the deco 7 brush with uh, a Z add intensity, okay, because I want to add instead of subtract. And what I want to do is I want to add some mass to the center here, to the middle. And I'm turning on my uh, polyframe mode so that I can see the, the wireframe on the object. And it will help guide me and let me know which area I should add mass to. So I want to add mass to this using this deco brush. And I'm also, if you notice, I'm also using an alpha here that gives a little bit of noise. Just makes it look a little bit more natural and realistic. And I'm just adding this mass, and this mass is pretty much the uh, the concrete or the cement that uh, is in the middle of the wall, basically the core of the wall, and it's exposed. By using this brush, we can expose this. So just add mass all the way around, and this will expose the uh, what is essentially that cement that's in the middle of the wall. And the deco brush does a good job just layering mass on top and not making it look too round but not too square either. so it's this very nice mix of something that looks um, manufactured like a building or something like that like a wall but at the same time it has this nice organic feel to it um, that rock formations or cement or hard objects like that usually have and of course by using that alpha at the same time we create some very nice noise some subtle noise on there that looks very natural and just kind of flows with it and um, just looks like it belongs. 
So I'm using a lot of Z intensity here. I'm using about 37. So that's plenty. And you can hold down the Alt key if you want to uh, do the opposite of the brush instead of add, subtract. And I find that, that that usually is a great way of just adding some um, variety to this, some variation. So I'll go in and I'll use add and just add some mass to this. And then I'll use the subtract by holding down the Alt key and just subtract just a subtle amount. And then maybe add a little bit, smooth it, and then add a little bit more and just keep working the sculpt. So let's create a new layer now. We'll call this one INT uh, Mass Noise. So interior mass noise, basically. I'm going to add some noise to this interior mass, basically to cement. And I'm going to use the noise brush to do that because the noise brush is perfect for doing this kind of stuff. It's great for rocks. It's great for cement. Anything that really needs noise. So I'm using Z-Add uh, with an intensity of about 9. And I'm just going in here and just adding some noise. I'm trying to keep the noise mainly on the... Um, the cement here, the center mass that's sticking out. So just come in here and just kind of nice and easy come in here and paint some of this noise. Awesome. And we'll create a new layer. And we'll call this one Edge Crumpling. And I'm going to use the Crumple Brush for this. And the Crumple Brush is usually used for, for other things but I find that using it for like concrete and stuff, it's actually pretty good if you want to get this kind of a look. Uh, I'm using Z Add with an intensity of about 19. And you can see how when I come in here and I use this edge crumple brush, how it just kind of deforms this area. And it's great because I want to deform the arrow's damage on this wall just to kind of emphasize that a little bit more, make it look a little more natural, believable. So you could change the size of the brush and really add a little bit extra crumpling on the edges so you want to add some general overall soft crumpling to the general area in a large space and then maybe just come in there with a smaller brush and just add a little bit iterate it a little bit more and just add a little bit more crumpling to the edges and stuff and you can see how that makes a huge difference if I turn it off and on you can clearly see um, how awesome that effect is it just sells the effect much better you don't want to go too overboard with this brush though it will deform the object significantly so I'm just gonna go back to the interior mass noise and soften some of this stuff up by holding shift shift smooths out and then I'm gonna come back in and add a little more noise the crumple brush again it deforms things so it deformed the noise a little bit and I didn't like the noise how it looked before anyway uh, it looked way too rough. So by coming in here and again doing that process of iteration where you smooth or subtract and then add again, it just makes things look more natural. More iterations just seems to look nicer in my opinion. So coming in here and holding shift and smoothing some of this noise out and then adding the noise back in just uh, makes it look a lot nicer. The results just end up being a whole lot better. And again, the idea here is to use layers. You don't have to use layers in ZBrush. It's an optional workflow. But it's a workflow that I advocate and I advise you to, uh, to try out, see if you like it, if it works out for you. It's almost like when working with a, a Photoshop or any program that uses layers. You can uh, non-destructively just create a new layer, try out some sculpting, some brush or something, and um, just keep it in that layer. So let's create a new layer over here called uh, Small Dents. And again, you want to work with layers because it gives you the power of trying different things out and experimenting. And then later, if you don't like what you did or, you know, maybe your boss doesn't like that uh, area of sculpting and you need to change something, it'd be very difficult to change it if there wasn't layers. With layers, you can just go, oh, okay, well, you know, that crack or that scratch or that dent or whatever it is uh, that area of sculpting was done with a layer so I can just go and turn the layer off and show my boss my director or whoever you know this is what it looks like without the layer there you go I find that um, combining those alphas with different brushes and things can give you pretty much unlimited combinations of possibilities however you can always um, import your own alphas so you can do that. You can import your own alphas and texture images into ZBrush and use those. 
So if you have a specific pattern or something you're trying to use, you can create an alpha yourself and then import it into ZBrush and use that for modeling. So I've subdivided this to level 8. And here's the level 1 subdivision. This is the one that you, you would want to export out. So you want to export out a level 1 subdivision. Um, so you could take that to your 3D program and use that as your base model to normal map on. That would be the base model to put like in a game, for example, or something like that. And then subdivision level 8 is the high-res one. I'm going to export that out as an OBJ. And uh, just give this a name or something that you can remember. Place it somewhere where you can find it easily. Okay? I like to call it from ZBrush. That way I know that it's uh, an object coming from ZBrush into high-res. Um, the exporting process can take a moment. This is a very heavy, dense mesh that's tens of millions of uh, polygons or triangles. It can it can take a little while to um, to export out, but that's okay. All right, so if this thing exported out, uh, we're ready to go. Don't forget to export out a low res and high res, um, and that's going to do it for this video.